How are we doing? How has our week been? Hello guys, welcome, welcome. I'm seeing you people. Tell your loved ones, <laughs> tell your fan family that we have started. Okay. All right, so let's kick start. Tonight's live chat is going to be less than 20 minutes. I'm just going to go straight up to the point. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Live Chat with Lawyer Precious. My name is Precious Toju. I am a business recovery lawyer, insolvency practitioner, um, real estate consultant, and a mediation advocate. Okay, so that's a long list, right? <laughs> and um, basically, what I do is to help startups and investors avoid and solve costly legal mistakes in the business and daily transaction. I also help to recover monies owed to creditors or investors and I help to restructure corporate entities. For those that are into restructuring, you have major and acquisition, uh, you have liquidation, you have winding up, you have insolvency, all of that. So I help to do all of that. And uh, for the past nine days, I have been doing startup series. And I was supposed to have a guest tonight. I was supposed to, you know, have a guest, somebody that, um, I was supposed to have somebody that will talk to us about real estate today. But because I'm actually doing a startup series, that is going to be running throughout this month either by um, I'm writing about it, I'm doing short videos about it, or I go live about it. So I decided that then my guest come, uh, I'll feature my guest. Uh, I need to reschedule her for like something somewhere in the month of November because this month is actually filled up. I have features. And so I said, okay, let me just do something about startup so that the series can make sense. So tonight, I'm going to be talking about understanding the plays and roles of a co-founder, a partner, and an investor as a startup. Let me take that again. Tonight, we'll be talking about understanding the plays and roles of a co-founder, a partner, and an investor as a business startup. It's really important that as a startup, you know the, the place of these people, you understand the roles that they are to play in your business because a lot of people usually mix it up. A lot of people do not really know who a co-founder is, who a partner should be, should not be, and who an investor is. Some people just automatically assume that once somebody invests in their business, the person is a partner. While some investors just think that they are part that they are partners with business automatically that that because they have they've put their money down into the business that investing into the business then automatically that they are a partner in that business or that they co own the business with you. It's absolutely wrong because if a if you do not have an understanding of this, you will just treat your business in quotes anyhow. You will start on the wrong notes you will start involving the wrong people in the business and if it is a very good convincing business idea and it booms in the marketplace you you may be having issues 
with those people that you bring into your business. So you, you, it's very important that you understand the roles of those people, they want that place where they should belong, you know, put them in that place. And the best way to actually put them in that place is to have agreements for each of them. So I'm still going to come to that at the tail end of the discussion. So let's start with a co-founder. Who is a co-founder? A co-founder is a founder. So the only reason why we're using co-founder is because there is another person that is also in that business. So if I, for example, if I, if I came up with the business idea that I want to produce this cap, cap wig or wig cap, I don't know, wig hat, for example, and it is my idea, probably I have been selling wig, or I want to go into the, 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 the market of wig selling, and I just see that the place is saturated, everybody is just selling wig. What else can I do to be different? What else can I add? What flavor can I add to this business that will make me outstanding? That once I, I add that, people sees, sees me as an authority in this. And then while they come to buy my wig hat or hat wig, I don't know how they call it, then they can also see that I sell all the wigs. So once I come up with the idea of um, a wig hat, I am the founder of that business. Let me say, uh, um, um, precious wig hat enterprises or oh, wig hats and I decided to even trademark it wig hats so I am solely the founder of that enterprise that business I am the owner of that idea I'm not just the founder of the business the idea the business idea I own it personally solely but a situation where I decide to you know go into wig production with somebody else and maybe I call an old school mate or a sister or anybody and I said I want to like I want us to be selling wig okay and I'm thinking that we can create a wig hat and this other person said yes we can actually create a wig hat uh, but let us just stick to um, the normal hat let us not I don't know why so the person now says, let us not just go into the creating of the wig hat. My Facebook is paused now. Instagram was paused earlier. Facebook is now paused. I don't know, network. So my, my, the person I'm sharing the idea with now comes up with another idea to improve on my idea, to make it better. And then we sit down, we plan towards it. We, we talk about the marketing strategy, we talk about production, we talk about color, we talk about type, we talk about how we're going to get into the marketplace, we talk about our e-commerce website, we talk about legal structure, we talk about everything. That person is my co-founder. So in that situation, I'm not going to be saying I'm the founder because I have somebody else with me. So the person is a co-founder, I am the founder. But there are situations where somebody is a founder, another person is a co-founder probably the person is the one that came up with the business idea first and then you came or came and you added to it so this you can have this person as a founder you have this person as a co-founder now where it's the where the person two people just came up with the idea god gave them the inspiration at the same time so they could be co-founder co-founder but in other words a co-founder is the owner of the business it's another person so when when you hear the word co-founder it simply tells you that there is somebody else that is involved in that business the business idea belongs to two people the business idea doesn't belong to just one person the business idea belongs to two people and these two people are the owner of the business my facebook is live now thank god and that these two, two people are the owner of the business and they decided to run the business together so in a nutshell a co-founder is owner of the business also owns the business with the other person so let's assume that they have an equity of 10 million naira. by equity i mean shares let us assume that it's a limited liability company now in the co-founders agreement or founders agreement they are going to have it's going to be agreed on if you check my earlier post whether on facebook or instagram you will hear me talk about part of my startup series i talked about founders agreements now when you co-own a business with somebody when some you you and somebody or you and people no matter the numbers of people involved 
came up with the business idea, talk about the marketing plan, talk about how you need to be in the in the marketplace, just came up with the business idea, do you have the owner of that business with the other person? So it's important that you have what is called a founder's agreement, that which means a uh, founder's agreement that you co-own this particular business with somebody. So in that founder's agreement, you're going to have things like um, ownership rights, of that business and that ownership right you're going to like agree that no matter how how much or how many shares that you sell out the equity of your company or your business you cannot give out more than 50 percent okay and the other 50 percent has to be shared equally between the founders because you cannot be a co-founder and the other person is having um for example your equity is um your share capital is 10 million you have uh, um, other people have subscribed to 5 million. Now, the other 5 million has to be 2.5 million, 2.5 million. So by the time you put it together, it's half of the company and half is outside to, for people to come and subscribe. And that those things are what is going to be stated in your founder's agreement. That at no point in time should the business give out more than 50% of its worth. And 50% must revert back to the founders, and you must state the rate. Is it is it 50 50%? Is it 40 60%? But in most cases, co-founders always share the same equity ratio or the same uh, um, um, ration when it comes to equity. So basically, a co-founder is somebody that owns the business with you, and not just owning the business with you in mouth. It also owns the business with you in papers legally so the person's details must be in your registration document so at the point of even creating that business a co-founder does not come into the business after the business has been created so you need to understand that it's very important a co-founder is somebody that is there from inception from the time that you gave birth to that business the two of you gave birth to the business together the two of you thought of the business together the two of you or the three of you or the ten of you depending on the number founded the business together now do not get it twisted a co-founder can eventually leave the management of the business but it's still a co-founder a co-founder does not necessarily have to be involved in the day-to-day -day running of the business because a lot of people just feel because I founded a company, I founded an organization, and so it means that I must be in the day-to-day -day running of the business. Oh no, it doesn't even mean. A co-founder does not necessarily even have to be the chief executive officer of that company or that business. So you find a lot of group of companies where the main owner, the co-owner, is not even the executive executive is not even in the management board um, and it could be you, you just say that he's a, he's, a, he's a founder or he's a co-founder or he's a chairman but may, may not even be the managing director may not be the CEO because these are people that are involved in the day-to-day -day business okay so I hope that is gotten so in a, when you're creating a business when you're co-owning a business with a second or third person you're going to have between the two of you, what is called a founder's agreement. You need to have a founder's agreement which spells out the rights, the duties, the roles, the place of the other person that owns the business. So you cannot co-own a business with somebody and go for a partnership agreement. No, you cannot do that. What if you, um, um, you, what you will do or what you're going to sign with your co-owner is a founder's agreement and in that founder's agreement sharing formula the rights the place incapacitation incapacitation in the sense that oh what happens if a co-founder dies what happens if a co-founder has an accident and he's not able to you know be involved in the business directly or does this co-founder want to be involved in the day-to-day -day business um, activity you guys will agree in that co-founders agreement we're going to get people on board to manage the business while we are in the background this is going to be the sharing formula those are the things that the co-founders agreement is going to be um, is going to contain and very important a co-founder comes into play comes into the picture at the beginning of the business from the very beginning of the business, even before the business was registered, a co-founder 
name and identity and personal details must be in the registration documents. All right, so who is a partner? Let's come to a partner. Who is a partner of a business? Now, we have different types of partner. We have limited partner. We have general partner. I did a video. I did a live section on it about different types of partner. Please, you know, check it out on my YouTube channel, Precious Studio. Just go to YouTube or you can check my IGTV or here, anywhere. So, check it out. Now, you have different types of partner. You have partners that just contribute money to the business. You have partners that are in, into, involved in the day-to-day -day running of the business. Let me take, for example, now we've been talking about co-founder. Let's, uh, we've been talking about people that wants to create a hat. Maybe I want to do a wig hat and I, I, I call on somebody else and he co-found it with me. Now, we could partner with somebody. Probably we do not even know how to produce it. We may have the business idea. We may have the ideology. We may know... We may, we may know what it's, you know, we may have an idea of what we want it to be like, but we do not even know, we may not have an idea of the technical know-how, okay, of how we're going to buy it, where we're going to buy the wig, the hat, who is going to produce it for us, the labeling, the branding, the marketing. So we can partner with somebody that is in the field that has a good idea of the technical know-how to run that business. So... A partner could come in, now that person can partner with us to help us um, um, in the field, to help us with the production, or to even finance it. It all depends on what the partner is coming into us. But a partner does not necessarily have to be in your registration document. In fact, I do not advise you to, when you co-found a business with somebody, you now bring in a partner as has um uh, as um, in your registration documents that is why you have what is called partnership agreement when somebody decides to partner with you as a founder or a co-founder you can easily do a partnership agreement to spell out the type of partnership relationship that you're having with that person and what the person is to do and what the person is not to do you, are, you have partners that are involved in the day-to-day -day running of the business you have partners that are just to bring in clients you have partners that will help you you know, produce that thing depending on what you're doing. You have partners that will source for finance, that they will bring in financiers and then get a percentage. So there are different types of partners, but the bottom line is your a partner does not own your the business with you. Except you decide to do to register a partnership business. Now somebody may ask, what's not the difference between registering a partnership business and co-owning? They're, they're two different things. Now, where you, where you you could actually co-own a business with somebody and you could also, you know, want to partner with that person. It all depends on what people agree on. The bottom line is you, you will have to meet your lawyer, meet a lawyer, you sit down, let the lawyer understand what exactly it is that you want to do and guide you accordingly, tell you the, do, the document you should go for, the agreement you should not go for. Now, this video is just to give you a general knowledge of what a co-founder is, what a partner is, what an investor is, and what they are not. So a, a partner doesn't necessarily have to come in at the inception of registering your business. That is why it's advisable, best legal advice is when you're bringing in somebody to help you with the running of the business or probably to help you in the management of the business or probably to bring in more ideas to be in the field is partnership. As long as the person is not your employee, the person is a partner with you. Where you are not paying the person, when the person is not a 9 to 5, is not under your payroll, the person is your partner. When the person is, I'm going to be bringing this to the table, what am I going to get in return in your business? The person is a partner. Let's assume that you are into supplies of building materials. Okay? You're into supplies of, and uh, probably you're, you've been supplying only nails and probably cement. And then you now want to begin to supply things like stones, little rock, and you also want to like, uh, you know, get this uh, uh, machines that will help you probably to sand fuel, and um, it's a whole lot of money. And somebody says, "Oh, I can actually get those things for you. Um, can I partner with you to, to to bring it anytime you want it?" So, if for example, if for example the person says, "Okay, I'm going to partner with you to bring it. I'm going to make this this uh, maybe uh, sand filling machine available to you at any point in time. What is it? What is in for me?" So you could have like, oh, okay, whenever you, we need it and you bring it in, you could share, 
um, 20 percent of whatever profit comes in from that your supply for making that machine available so you have a partnership agreement with them so that by the time you bring in that business and there is a profit no long story they pay you your your profit it doesn't mean that the person has to be in your day-to-day -day running of the business. It doesn't mean that the person has to own the business with you. No. So a partner is different from a co-founder. Now, so let's move quickly to a um, to an investor. An investor, as the name implies, is a financier, is a sponsor, is is a, is, is is somebody that funds your business. So let's say you have this business, this weak heart business, and to do your first production, maybe your first hundred production, you're going to be needing like 20 million naira. And in your post, you have like 5 million naira. You're going to be bidding for investors. Invest investors can come in different forms. In fact, investors can come to buy shares into your company. Investors can give you the money. So it all depends on how they come in. Now, an investor can decide that he wants to, you know, be part of the equity. He wants to, an investor can decide that he wants to, like, you know, buy into the shares. So, if, for example, you need 20 million naira and your share capital is 1 million, you now apply to CAC to raise your share capital and you ask the, this, or this investor, how much are you able to raise? And the person says, okay, I'm going to raise you 5 million naira. But I'm not giving you that five million naira so that you can just give me money. I want to give you that five million naira to be, to, to be a shareholder in your company. I just don't want to give you the money and walk away and make my interest afterwards or make my profit afterwards. No, I want to be enjoying dividend, continual dividend on that money. I want to have a share of your equity. So the person says he wants to subscribe to 5 million naira share capital in your company. The person is an investor in the route of a shareholder. The person is an investor using the route of share subscription. But in that situation, you're not going to give him an investor agreement. What you are going to sign with him, what your company is going to sign with him is a shareholder's agreement. Now, where a person says he's not interested in your equity, he's not interested in being a shareholder of the company, he wants to give you this money, he wants to fund this business idea, but he wants to understand how your work, how the business is going to work. What is the visibility of this business? What is the marketability of this business? What is the survival, uh, the survival status of this business? Can this business survive the test of time? Have you done your visibility study? So an investor goes beyond dropping money. An investor wants to understand your business. He wants to understand that he is not throwing in his hard-earned money. He wants to see your business proposal. He wants to see your business plan. He wants to see your profit merging. He wants to see what you are proposing in the next five years, in the next ten years. So for as so, so for some of you that are TV people, you would have seen this program, The Lions Den. Is an investment reality series where you have multi-millionaires in Nigeria and then you come and you know they want to invest in the business idea but they want to see the best business idea how 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 uh, opt optimistic you are how realistic you are how innovative you are how smart you are how entrepreneurial what the entrepreneurial spirit how what is that thing? That spirit of entrepreneurship. You don't want to see it. So they don't just, you don't just come to say story. They see reality. They come, oh, I want to produce, I want to produce this remote. I have been able to produce 10. And out of that 10, I have sold 8. And now I have a demand of 50. So if you invest in this 50, uh, you invest 10 million in this 50, I can assure you that you will get, I'm, I'm, I'm selling it for 1,000 1, Naira. So for each sale, I'm going to be giving you 300 Naira as an investor. And right now, I have an order, a, a, an order on ground. So people have deposited for that 50. I need money. I'm using the money that they have deposited. I need money to balance or to produce. So for each, you're going to be getting through 300. That is visibility. That, that, is, that is marketability. That is somebody that knows what he's doing. So the Lions Den reality series is for entrepreneurs to come and share their business idea and multi-millionaires invest into it. In that kind of investment, what those multi-millionaires will get as is an investor's agreement if they are not subscribing to the shares. So I hope this helped. I hope 
you got a better understanding. A co-founder is somebody that owns the business with you. A partner is somebody that comes in probably when you have started the business or even at, at the, um, or even if it is at the inception of the business that you pull are partners, you will now register the business as a partnership business. It's a different thing entirely. Or, so a partner, a, um, you, can, you can have a partnership business at inception where you could just decide to register as a partnership business and everybody, you know, defines his or her role. So the major difference is that in partnership, a partner can decide, I want to be part of the business. This other partner can say, I just want to be giving you money and enjoy a lifetime profit. Whereas in a co-founder, they own the business together. They do not necessarily need to be running the business. They could employ hands. They could get people to come in as partners to run the business. They could get board of directors, people in that board, board executives to run the business. Whereas an investor is somebody that just drops money that you need for you to run the business. An investor can come in as a shareholder or an investor can come in as a creditor of your business. And that is why in the winding up of a business, the creditors in law are, are considered first. Creditors by, you could have, you know, you have secured um, creditors and you have unsecured creditors. That is a deeper aspect of corporate, you know, uh, uh, restructuring and, um, and recovery process, which I don't want to go into. It's not, it's not the niche of this class today. But what I want to leave you with tonight is that when you co-found a, a co-founder is somebody that owns the business with you, that started the business with you, that registered the business with you, and has his details also in the registration document. What you will get as a shareholder, I mean, what, what a, a co-founder, what the agreement you're going to be having with a co-founder is called a founder's agreement. Both of you will have to sign a founder's agreement, spelling out your duties, your place, your roles, your responsibilities, and your entitlements. Now, when it is a partnership business, is either it is a partnership business or a person comes in subsequently after you've established the business as a partner, what you are to give the person or to sign with the person is called a partnership agreement. Now, where it is an investor, the person can invest either by subscribing to the shares of your company and you know being part of the equity or just dropping money or being a creditor or just you know just dropping money for you to say I uh, you're going to be giving me this people agree in in the situation where it is a shareholder person coming as a shareholder you give the person what is called shareholders agreement situation where the person is not interested in buying into your shares but wants to drop money for your project since that your business idea is good he wants to tap into it and also enjoy profit you give the person what is called investors agreement so the type of agreement that you sign with a person is dependent on the type of contractual relationship business relationship that you sign up with that person so i hope this helped if you have any question you can quickly drop in the um, 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 comment section so if you need to if if depending on the uh, the kind of relationship that you're having with somebody if you want um an agreement if you if, you, if you're not sure is it the partnership agreement? Is it not the partnership agreement I should go for? It's simple. You just slide into my DM and you book a consultation session so that we can understand what exactly it is that you want to do with your with your business person so that you can have a clearer picture. But the bottom the bottom line is a co-founder is different from a partner and a partner is different from an investor. They all have their different roles. They play different roles. They all have their different places and they must have that different agreement because they are not the same thing. A co-founder is different from a partner and a partner is different from an investor. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please do not forget to tune in next week, Saturday, 9 p.m. I'm always live and next week I'll be having a guest to come speak with us. And so do not miss flyers will be out. Join the startup series. Um, I need to update the series. I'm, 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 I'm left like with four or five to update. Please join the startup series. Um, uh, it's like a challenge so that you will understand what exactly it is you need to do as a startup, the things you need to get in place as a startup. And then the lead business and legal structure group coaching registration is still on. The registration is just 25,000 Naira and it's going to be a 10 day um, um, training. Is for startup, it's for those already in business, for people that are thinking of going to business, for people that want to also restructure the business, change that 
move their business from this level to another level all that you need to understand the elementary aspects of business law um corporate um restructuring your business how to run your business and escape all this police palaver here and there and all of that are the things that i'm going to be teaching you during the business legal structure business and legal structure group coaching just slide into my dm you will see it um, if you're on instagram just go to my link and click on it you will see business and legal structure group coaching click and subscribe we are starting the class first day in the month of november is from first november to 10th of november and it's just twenty five thousand naira only and it's going to be a live class i'm going to be it's going to be on zoom it's going to be a live class where you get to ask questions all of your questions so it's more like consultation but in the group thank you guys for tuning in god bless you see you next week um saturday by 9 p.m my name is precious Stoji. god bless you bye